Hello everyone, welcome to another late edition of Xbox Live Indie Games for the week of April the 1st to April the 7th, 2012. Only eight games to look at for that week, starting off with Space Debris. Alright, so it's a pretty basic game, as we're, we learn how to play it right here. That wasn't circle enough. Okay, so basically how this goes is we have to draw the same shape around an enemy as the enemy is. To kill it. Which sometimes can be easy if they're moving slowly like that. Sometimes moving quickly and sometimes they're circles. And the game acknowledged that as a circle. Seems like kind of a sort of a variation of kicks. Not exactly, because in kicks you didn't have to match the shape of the enemy, but you did have to draw lines around them. Fortunately, it's forgiving as to what it considers to be a circle. Otherwise, I'd be in trouble. Oh. Yeah, you die if you touch him. No, he doesn't think that's a circle. It doesn't seem that... Oh. Got a... Got a power-up. And I... What is that? I don't think that's a power-up. Yeah, so it... Uh, the enemies can't break the lines, it seems. They don't kill you if they touch the lines. So... It's kind of forgiving also in that way. Oh. Want to see if I can get two in there? No, not yet. Okay, there we go. So it doesn't seem like there's a whole lot... No. There's a whole lot to it right now. Let's see, it also says at the top that I have nukes. Okay, that would be a nuke. Try this out before, I saw some triangles too. Don't see any uh, here for some reason. I mean, this seems to be all there is really to it. I don't think there's really a whole lot. Oh, triangles! Got got a whole line of triangles now. Uh, hmm. Okay. So that seems to be all there is really. I mean, it seems like the configurations of enemies get a bit more complex as time goes on, such as having to be able to time being able to get through those lines of triangles there in order to form the triangle. But that, you get the basic idea of what this game's all about. Space debris, game controls well, the graphics are, you know, functional, nice sound. So it doesn't seem bad or anything, just, uh, just seems a little plain, but not bad. But that's space debris. Next is Mega City. Now, this game, on first glance, may make you think of uh, a SimCity type of game, so kind of city simulation. It, re it really isn't. It's more of a puzzle game that you use, uh, well, that really has sort of a, a city-building theme to it. So this is basically how it works. It takes place on a grid like this. We have pieces on the left side of the screen. Uh, right now, the only pieces we have available are houses. What we need to do is accumulate points in that left column. It says zero out of four. I have to get four points in that column to continue on. So how do we do this? Well, I'm going to put a house there. House has zero points right now. I'll build some houses around this area. Apartments can be used to get two times the points. However, I have nothing yet that can actually give these houses and apartments points. Now, I have a power station that can give points. On the left, it's blue. On the right, it's red. The blue means it'll add points to whatever is in its way. Red will take away points from a what, whatever is in its way. So if I put this here, all those things gain points. Next is the prison. Well, who doesn't want to live next to a prison? I'm sure I could just put the prison right here in the middle of the residential section and no one would mind. However, the prison will take away uh, points from anything that is adjacent to the prison on the corner, as you can see where the red squares are. 
I'm just going to shove this down here. How else I'll put that here? Get a point. Uh, apartments. Two points. Water treatment. Uh, okay, anything on the left is going to get negative points. Anything on the right will get positive points. Only thing on the left right now is the prison. So I'll put that there. Now, right now... Oh, actually, I just realized that that actually gave me negative points for the prison. I now have negative one out of four points on the left column. So how do we fix this? Hmm... All right, a fire station. This is good because anything above or below the fire station gets points. Now I have three out of four points. So you basically see how this works. The other two spots will get points if I put anything down on them. And that's four out of four. So you see, it's not really... It kind of looks like SimCity, but it doesn't really play like that. If I were to... Uh, engage in some bad city planning, such as putting this factory, you know, right in the middle of houses. It's kind of funny, but I don't gain anything from it. And, you know, unlike in SimCity, where the residents will just complain and yell at you about it, nothing like that happens here. Instead, you just don't advance. Uh, let's see, where should I put this? Hmm. Okay, so this... That, uh... Oh, that actually wasn't too bad. Let's see. Next, I have water treatment. Mm. Negate those negative squares there with water treatment. Power station. Uh, let's see. Mm -hmm. This one already has four, so I should automatically get the uh, get past that column when it uh, when it gets to it. Uh, let's see. Factory. Where do I want to put this? This row was turning out to be very bad. I don't know what I'm going to do with that. Let's see. That is four, that is four, that is four. All right. A oh, park. Okay, the park. We can see that everything adjacent to it will get a point. Where do you want to put this? Hmm. Doesn't need it there, does not Actually, that'll help out over there, I think. None of these really need anything. Hmm. I need something to get some points onto this. Okay, I see something coming up now. Yeah, this fire station. Put that there, and I get five points. Yeah. And I automatically just blew past all of those columns, because I already built up points there. Now I have this one. It's kind of a trouble one. So we have these three sections here that are going to take away points. How do we do this? Okay, library coming up. I think I'm going to need that. Uh, yeah. Yeah, like that. And apartments here to give me the four points. It's actually a pretty good game. You know, I've, I'm actually uh, enjoying this. Train station. Oh, yeah, let's get that red spot out of there. Hmm, water treatment. Where do I get... Where I put this down. All right, now I don't have any points in that left column. Hmm. Hospital. Okay, so hospital is a really good piece because anything up, down, left, or right to it will get points. So let's see how do we want to do that. Maybe like this. Factory. Got to get that factory away. Hmm. I'm still not sure how to get points into that left column. I don't really like the look of that. Police station. Alright. Need two more. Hmm. Water treatment's not helping me.
School? That should help. Maybe. Actually, did not... Yeah, didn't really. Oh, wait, apartments. I can get the four points with that. Okay, good. So, yeah, I mean, not too much else to say about it, I guess, at this point. But I am enjoying, uh, enjoying this a lot more than I usually do enjoy XSplit games. It's very simple, you know. Not too much to get the hang of. 11 points, wow. Hmm. A mall. I haven't seen this one yet, so the mall... Increases points to the left, above, and below, and takes away to the right. I don't know how they come up with these uh, designations like this. Oh, time expired. So yeah, uh, Mega City. It's uh, a higher quality than we usually see on Xblig. And it's uh, pretty fun to play. I thought it was very interesting. Uh, a, lot of, uh, a lot of the puzzle games that you see on Xblig, I end up thinking are kind of overly simplistic to the point where... I don't really feel like there's much of a reason to play it. And while this game is not complex or anything, uh, I enjoy it. I enjoy it quite a bit. It's easy to get into. And uh, I don't know, maybe just a theme. Maybe that's just uh, interesting me a little bit more than we usually see from Xplit games. But Mega City, uh, yeah, I'd suggest actually buying this one. Next up is Amazingly Awful Games Volume 2. So that's promising, right? So, Amazingly Awful Games Volume 2, on the dashboard, it's called 10 Amazingly Awful Games Volume 2. First one is Blobby Bobby. Help him eat all the baked beans. Two things we can do is move and jump with Blobby Bobby. Oh, yeah. Here, here we go. MS Paint Adventures. Hold on. Sorry about that. I just had to lower the volume because even though I already have it pretty low, it still came out blasting. I wonder how that'll sound on the video. Alright, so you can see what we're doing. We're moving to the left. We're jumping on ghosts. We are a ghost ourselves. Getting beans. Gotta eat all the beans. Almost comboed those three ghosts. Oh no, oh no, Bobby. Well, we have ten games to go through here, so I think we'll just... That'll be enough of that. You know, the odd thing was that actually controlled a good deal better than a lot of x platformers do. It looked terrible, yeah, but in terms of moving Bobby around and jumping... I've played a lot worse on this service. Next is Fruit Defender. Vicious Fruit is coming to get us. Oh no. Gotta pop that fruit. So basically the way this works is Fruit comes down onto that cross in the middle of the screen and we have to press the face button that corresponds with that direction. In this case, pressing down is the A button. Pressing to the right is B, up A, sorry, up Y, then down A. Um, you've probably seen some kind of variation of this. I don't know if there's a name for this kind of game. Um, I remember seeing this kind of thing in Dante's Inferno. This was like a little mini game with souls. Now it's with fruit. I don't know if there's an actual uh, name for this game by itself, though. Every time I press a button, without there being fruit in that section, it counts as a miss. I can miss up to 20 times before losing. And the only time it really gets uh, difficult is when you have two pieces of fruit going in at the same time and you're not sure which one to press first.
Yeah. We're, we're popping all that fruit. I don't know why this fruit's coming to get us. Maybe we're showing it a thing or two. All right. Trial for that game is over. There's a... I guess there's a time limit for the trials of the games within the trial of the game. That's for Defender. Grid Warrior. You must survive against the onslaught of the grid. Let's see what what's that, that's about. Okay, Fire, Shield. All right. So... To shoot him up, it seems, with wireframe graphics. That green and black. And those, uh, those enemies are coming down the grid for us. We are not adhered to the grid for some reason. We can just move wherever we want. I mean, we have free motion. Seems to sort of contradict the whole idea of the grid, but, you know, whatever. Oh, we got more complex enemies. Got that one that can shoot on the side, and I don't think I can shoot it. Well, now the enemies can shoot as well. So we have to make the most of our, our free motion to dodge everything. So I assume this is going to get more and more complex as it goes on. Music is very exciting for what's going on currently on the screen. Yeah, so I mean, what do you want? Very basic gameplay. You can see what it's what this is all about. Let's see what happens on the third grid. Oh, we've got two guns on the sides now. You know, we have a lot of games to get through. I think I think that's about bad enough of of Grid Warrior. You get what it's about. Okay, great. I made the clone with zombies in it. Another twin stick zombie shooting shameless cash and clone. I'm guess I'm, I'm glad I'm not the only one that noticed that. Let's see. Yes. Uh-huh. We are definitely playing a twin stick zombie shooting game. That is what we're doing right now. Got got power-ups like the spread gun. We're controlling a character made in MS Paint, fighting zombies made in the same. But I think uh, I think the maker of Ten Amazingly Awful Games Volume Two put a bit too much effort into this because we are traversing this uh, this scrolling stage. If you want to make a true explig twin stick zombie shooting game. You, uh, you have it take place all on one big screen. Like, there's no real stage. It's just you're in the middle of it, and... Oh, I exploded. Because that's what happens when zombies touch you. Man, zombies would be much more cooler if that happened. Actually, that's kind of the plot to Killer7, isn't it? Never thought of it that way. Oh, escape! Yes, I, I, I survived the zombie apocalypse. Oh, now I'm continuing. In some sort of nondescript outdoor area, I guess. It kind of looks like grass. That's what's happening. Suda should make a, an Xbox Live indie game. Just, you know, on the weekend. In his free time. i just like to see what he would do. Oh, oh no, I exploded again. Okay, I think that's about enough of this one. It, it definitely is a clone with zombies in it. Lame Invaders 2? I didn't play the first one, so hopefully I don't miss out on important backstory. Okay, side-scrolling shoot 'em up Graphics are inoffensive. Yeah, I'm shooting. Shooting some rockets. I'm assuming those rockets would take off in the... In, oh, hold on. Alright, there's ten amazingly awful games, though. So, we have to go back in to play the rest of them. Hold on, I'm gonna reset the trial. 
All right, I'm back in Lame Invaders 2. And uh, it seems like this is the fifth game out of ten. Oh. I think these levels are... I think this is not the same level I was just playing before. So I don't know what's going on with that. Are the levels being randomly generated or what? Or do you just shoot? Does it just take you to a different level every time you play? It says I'm on stage three. How did that happen? Well, even though I'm I'm dying just by crashing into walls, it has more to do with uh, with my own game playing than it is with uh, the game itself. I mean, the game does not actually seem to control it badly. It's, it's decent. Same power-ups as in uh, as in the zombie game. And this is just kind of depressing, though, that in a, a package called 10 Amazingly Awful Games, in which it's 10 games that were apparently made in like a couple days each, that a lot of them are showing better production values than standalone exploit games. Okay, nasty roids. Gotta defend myself against them. How do I do that? Okay, whoop. Uh, okay. Whoop. Okay, so we can see how this is gonna go. We got asteroids. Or rather, nasty roids. The nastier the better, as far as I'm concerned. Got those same power-ups again. Because why draw new power-up graphics for uh, for the individual games? You can just draw the same ones for for all of them. So I mean, it's basically asteroids, you know, except with sprite graphics. Which I don't know if that's a good thing. One of the charms of asteroids is the. Uh, the whole sort of vector look it has. But I guess if you feel like playing Asteroids on x for some reason, here it is. Alright, let's head back to the main menu. Seeker. Okay, computers on planet Tarama have gone rogue. Send your Seeker into the maze to find the computers. Alright. Let's see how this is like. Okay, that's apparently me. I'm going through rooms. My, oh, uh, hold on. Okay, killed those enemies and uh, got a battery. Okay, my power, which is slowly ticking down, it went back up to 999 when I got that battery. And I don't. S can I? No, I cannot shoot up and down, it seems. So I have to maneuver myself to shoot horizontally. I'm not sure what it is I'm looking at here. What am I? I'm so, some sort of nondescript black and gray thing. Kind of like some bean or something. So I have to find that rogue computer and shut it down, I think it said. I'm going through this maze. Well, and uh, I think I pressed a button before to bring up... Yeah, I'm, okay, there, the map. Alright. Well, the map makes things easier can see where I haven't been. Yeah, there it is. Oh. Don't know if the maps are prefabbed or if they're random. Oh, hold on, what's this? Okay, I guess that was the computer. The rogue computer. I destroyed it, and, uh, and now I'm on level two. So yeah, we're going through this maze, and it sure is, uh, you know, high-tech. With whatever that is in the background, and the stone borders. I don't know where this is supposed to be, but, you know, it's... We're shutting down computers that have gone rogue. It's the dark future, and everything, you know, cyberpunk, and... Computers and hackers and and stuff. I 
Does it seem like cyberpunk is kind of coming back into style lately? I never really saw anything cyberpunkish for a long time after the 90s, but oh, my power's gone really down now. But uh, recently it seems like there's more of that kind of thing around. I don't know what those enemies are. They don't really look like anything in particular. Oh, hold on. Oh. Now I had to risk trying to get that battery because my power is very low. Okay, that's Seeker. I think we're done with that. Storm Wheel, get ready to race across the sky roads. Are you ready? Because I am. Okay. We're driving and uh, shooting. Okay. And we can jump. So, yep. So it's Spy Hunter pretty much so far. That's not a bad thing. I like Spy Hunter. Whoop. Okay, we have to jump those gaps. There are worse things to emulate than Spy Hunter. And I died because I didn't jump the gap. But uh, those gaps do come on you very quickly since the view was really close up. So you don't actually see the gap until it's right there and then you have to react fast enough to jump over it. We have little obstacles on the road, some sort of uh, puddles of something. I'm not sure what that is. I guess we'll try to avoid those. Jump. Oh. We completed the level. We hunted spies. Now we're, uh... We're driving over some sort of arid desert planet, I think. I'm glad we're the only car that has machine guns. That gives us quite the advantage. It also makes us seem like the villain, doesn't it? These other cars can't fire machine guns, and then we're just driving up all on them, opening fire with dual guns. I don't know who these people are, or why they're on, why they're on this highway with me that's suspended in the sky. That guy just drove off. All right. We still have... There were still more games. More amazingly awful games, though, weren't there? So, hold on. Gotta restart the trial again. Alright, we're back. And, yeah, I guess that was enough of Storm Wheel. We got the idea. We are some kind of psych psychotic serial killer in a car that has machine guns mounted on it. And we are blowing up any cars that get in our way, regardless of who might be in them or what they're trying to do. Some of them probably had families. We don't care. Next is Terror Tunnel. We are driving through the Deadly Terror Tunnel. We must defend ourselves from the deadly denizens of Terror Tunnel and collapsing bits of roof. Let's see how terror, uh, terrorific this is. I'm not feeling terror so far. I think this game may not be delivering as promised on the terror. Basically, the way this game works is we have a crosshair on the screen, and you can figure out how this goes. We move the crosshair, and the guns on the bottom of the screen fire towards the crosshair. Kind of reminds me vaguely of Missile Command. Faster paced. Seems like kind of a similar idea. And we are shooting garbage out of the sky instead of incoming nuclear missiles, which makes it seem a lot less uh, urgent. The ground seems to be moving, or maybe we're moving on the ground. Oh, there's a block of garbage coming down on us. Oh, that one hit one of my guns. What a shame. So basically, it seems that the way this game works is you just kind of sweep the crosshair from left to right across the screen. And that basically hits everything except these big pieces that you have to concentrate fire on. And now we got yellow balls on the screen. What are they doing? 
Okay, so if we shoot one of the yellow balls, it falls down on us. We have to shoot that before it reaches us. So we see how that works. I, I'm still thinking this game is lacking in the terror department. Maybe if we bought the game and saw more of it, we would get to the terror. I did not see it yet. But that doesn't mean it's not in there. It might just mean that uh, we have to play further to get the get to the terror. Okay, yes, last game in 10 Amazingly Awful Games Volume 2, Viper Wing. Another space shooter fighting aliens. Okay, yes. We've had a couple of uh, different types of, well, more than a couple types of different, uh, different types of shooters so far. And to end it out, we are going with the arcade style vertical shooter. Apparently we're over Mars, I guess. Is that what that is? And we're fighting uh, fighter planes made out of origami. I think that is what that looks like. And the same power-ups that we saw in the other games. So 10 Amazingly Awful Games. I can't say it didn't deliver on that advertising, but... It's not any more awful than the typical exploit games, and some in some ways, they uh, they are better than a lot of their contemporaries on this service. So I guess if you were in the mood for exploit style games, you could do a lot worse than this. It is a better value than a lot of other exploit games. I mean, really, if you wanted to play a space shooter, you have a lot of better options, but. If you, wanted to play, if you wanted to play any of the games that are in this package, you have better options. But still, there are games on x that are much worse than these that are being sold as standalone games. So, can't really fault this for existing. And I beat the stage. Level's complete. And the trial for this game is over. Need to purchase the full game to play all the way. And I think, uh, I think exiting the game is appropriate at this point. Well, it's a 10 Amazingly Awful Games volume 2. For the time that it took to make 10 Amazingly Awful Games, I would kind of like to have seen what they would have been able to do with one half-decent game. Maybe that'll be next. Maybe their next uh, release will be one half-decent game volume 1. I'll be looking forward to that.